Okay, well, on this, what I think will be the final segment, I want to just show a few more video things, uh, look at a vocabulary website that I find immensely useful, and then talk briefly about online etiquette and responsibility. Back in the arena of video, and this isn't necessarily YouTube, although you can find some of these on YouTube, I find that they are better quality at the Poetry Out Loud website. There's a whole series of beautifully done um, award-winning videos of students who have won the National uh, Poetry Recitation Contest, and I'll just give you a little bit of a taste here. Forgetfulness by Billy Collins. The name of the author is the first to go, followed obediently by the title, the plot, the heartbreaking conclusion, the entire novel, which suddenly becomes one that you have never read, never even heard of, as if one by one the memories you used to harbor decided to retire to the southern hemisphere of the brain. My kids like that one. This one is real popular. Bilingual, bilingue, by Rina Espiat. My father liked them separate. One there, one here. Allá y aquí. As if aware that words might cut into his daughter's heart, el corazón, and lock the alien part to what he was, his memory, his name, su nombre, with a key he could not claim. English outside this door, Spanish inside, he said, y basta. And then, let's see, one last. I am waiting by Lawrence Ferlinghetti. I am waiting for my case to come up, and I am waiting for a rebirth of wonder, and I am waiting for someone to really discover America and whale, and I am waiting for the discovery of a new symbolic western frontier, and I am waiting for the American eagle to really spread its wings and straighten up and fly right, and I am waiting for the age of anxiety to drop dead, and I am waiting for the war to be fought which will make the world safe for anarchy. I use um, the poetry out loud and other spoken word poetry. I'll show you just a couple more uh, for a variety of reasons. And it's not just poetry, although sometimes it's a great way to introduce a poem. Um, many of the poetry out loud poems are ones that we do. Uh, I do teach in class, and so it's nice for the kids to see, my students to see another student doing a, a, a really beautifully done presentation. But also they're just wonderful examples of a well-done, confident, upfront presentation with good eye contact, some motion, but not uh, being overly dramatic. Um, so I use them for a lot of different reasons. Let's see the other one. I wanted to show you the conviction poem. Um, I'm not going to show you the whole one. you got to look this one up for yourself, though. My students love this. In case you hadn't realized, it has somehow become uncool to sound like you know what you're talking about. <laughs> or believe strongly in what you're, like, saying. <laughs> Invisible question marks and parenthetical you knows and you know what I'm saying have been attaching themselves to the ends of our sentences, even when those sentences aren't, like, questions. <laughs> I use this one especially with uh, Fahrenheit 451 when we get to this section that talks about how intellectual has become a swear word. And then I also used it this year with my AP Lit and Comp students. We read an article called The Elusive Big Idea. And the basic premise was that this generation actually thinks less than prior generations. And surprisingly, the students actually agreed with the article. And so we had a good discussion based on the article and this particular poem. At the ending of the poem says, you, Unlike the bumper sticker, it's important not just to question authority, but to speak with it too. And so, of course, my students love to question authority, but the idea of, of speaking with conviction, having something worth saying, um, we had much to talk about and discuss with that. And then one last one. I'm assuming that you're familiar with the TED Talks. I just learned about them somewhat recently, so I'm a little embarrassed of that. And uh, here's another beautiful one with spoken word poetry, which I'm also fairly new to. I'll just tantalize you once again with a little bit of it. If I should have a daughter, instead of mom, 
she's going to call me point B. Because that way she knows that no matter what happens, at least she can always find her way to me. And I'm going to paint the solar systems on the backs of her hands. So she has to learn the entire universe before she can say, oh, I know that like the back of my hand. And she's going to learn that this life will hit you hard in the face, wait for you to get back up just so it can kick you in the stomach. But getting the wind knocked out of you is the only way to remind your lungs how much they like the taste of air. As you can imagine with spoken word poetry, even a short segment like this, there's a lot that we could discuss, a lot we could write about. And again, a small segment, I don't even have to use the whole thing, can often be a wonderful slice to add to a, uh, a poem that we're studying. So it can be a complimentary poem or uh, to a piece of literature. There's a particularly beautiful uh, poem about a woman looking at the baby she's going to have to give up uh, that I use when I teach the Scarlet Letter. Okay, shifting gears completely here. I do want to look at vocabulary briefly just because there's a website that I've found that I really, really like to use. And I'll just demonstrate it briefly here with um, an article that I start the year with, How Not to Talk to Your Kids. Uh, once we've done all three parts, I break it into three parts because each part is four pages. At the beginning of the year, my sophomores think that's an awful lot. It actually ends up being the first chapter to Poe Bronson's book, Nurture Shock. And so what I did is I took the text and I poured it into the website that I'm going to demonstrate for you in a moment and it breaks it down and it shows me what percentage of the words are from the first uh, 1 to 1,000 most common, commonly used words in the English language and then the next percentage of the, mo of the 1,000, 1 to 2,000 and then the ones I'm really interested in are the academic word list. Um, it's possible that those are ones that we may not have covered or might need to be re-emphasized and then also I'm going to look at the ones that are off list words and these are often technical terms or people's names or something like that and then the printout that I'm able to get um, shows me in colors and I kind of have to memorize them but I'm generally looking for the yellow and the red words and so here we go constantly um, awareness percent uh, this particular article has the word percent and percentage quite a bit well if a student doesn't really grasp the concept of percent or percentage this article is going to make no sense to them um, so it allows me to go through and make decisions about which words and then I went through the article myself based on this printout and decided which words that I wanted to emphasize either in class discussion or as we read aloud or um, uh, maybe wanted to put a couple of them on the quiz afterwards but it gave me some good ideas and then later on it shows all of these words how often they're used and this is the one I really like because then I can see in color how many times the various words are used so researchers research um, grades where's percentage percentage is used percent is used 10 times so that's going to tell me based on the number of times it's used that I'm going to need to um, emphasize it and then I'm going to take a look through the red ones since those are off list words and make sure that the students understand those as well so let's use an article and I'll just show you how it works because it's really really simple um, this is an article from actually a year ago when the Chilean miners were rescued and it was a great article that I used. So this is the website. You can see it right up here. And all you do is uh, copy and paste the text into it and then hit submit. And uh, the report actually looks even more cool online because it's in black. And here it is. The text that I just poured in is on the left side. And then the coloring that, uh, in this case, 77% of this article is uh, in the first thousand words, another five five and a half percent is in the next thousand and that basically less than 20 percent is either academic word list or is um, off list words and so I can look at it and make some decisions based on it do some cop copying and pasting so I love using this particular uh, vocabulary we uh, website because sometimes what it'll do is it'll tell me if, if I find out that only 50% of the words are in the first 2,000 and then the rest are up in the academic word list or off list, I'm not going to use that article with my sophomores um, or at least I'm not going to use it without an awful lot of support. So sometimes I'm not even going to do anything with the vocabulary. We're not going to do any exercises or anything like that. I just want to run it through and just get a feel for you know how difficult is this particular article and this website um, gives me a really quick way to have a snapshot and I can look at the academic word list words throughout the article and go oh no I know my kids know these I can look at the off list words and go oh no these are just names of people they'll be fine with that um, so that's the um, vocabulary site I like to use and I'm going to have to put the etiquette and uh, online responsibility on another segment <laughs>